كان نفسي قبل الحرب حاجات كثيره يعني العب اكمل تعليم زي اي اي طفل او زي اي طفله فكان نفسي صراحه اطلع كاتبه او محاميه او صحفيه شيء But 13-year-old Leon Abuolata isn't any other child. She's a child of Gaza. She and over 2 million other Gazans waking up that Saturday morning to the sound of all-out war. Hamas terrorists had begun their slaughter of about 1,200 Israelis on October 7th. Though Israel didn't start this war, Israel will finish it. Over the next year, the IDF decimating Gaza while Hamas operated underneath civilian areas in its tunnels. I have only one question. We as civilians, where are we supposed to go? The fighting displacing about 2 million Palestinians, 90% of Gaza's population. Over the past year, embedded with the Israeli military, we saw it firsthand. This is where displaced people have been trying to get from North Gaza to the southern part of Gaza. Pretty much all the roads around us are obliterated. There is small arms fire just on the other end of this berm here. And most recently, we were in Rafa. What struck most was the emptiness of the place. In Tel Sultan neighborhood in Rafa, this devastation goes on as far as the eye can see. And as the war drags on, death and disease hang over Gaza. Famine is setting in parts of the enclave with no end in sight. In the first few weeks of the war, then 21-year-old college student Tala Herzala documented life under siege for ABC News. Yesterday was very hard. There were a lot of bombings around us. In one second, we decided to leave our house. There are bombing in a small area. And so we went to the hospital. After a year of war, like so many others in Gaza, Tala's home was destroyed. Unable to leave, she and her parents now live in a refugee camp. I was a university student preparing for graduation. I was a girl holding a lot of hope. I learned that having future plans in war will destroy you more than give you hope. Searching for water is a burden on all Gazans. You are deprived from everything. Home for her is this small tent makeshift bed and just a few belongings. Since the war began, they've had to relocate six times. Batala says she's lost so much more. I lost seven cousins with their families in this uh, war. Since October 7th, nearly 42,000 Palestinians have been killed and close to 100,000 have been wounded, according to Gaza's Hamas-run Ministry of Health. Hundreds of aid workers and journalists also killed in the conflict. <laughs> Many of the casualties, children. Thirteen year old Leon narrowly escaped death, badly wounded during a strike at a refugee camp where she and her family had sought shelter. وقعت في الأرض ما حسيت إلا حالي في الأرض وغرقانة في الدم. نعم طفلة من قطاع غزة. That's her father by her side in the hospital. حاسة من جوا عظم بتكسر من قط وجع مش طبيعي. After weeks, Leon and her mother were evacuated to Egypt 
They'd hoped that doctors in Cairo could save her leg. They couldn't. Are you going to keep that second leg? Leon is now in America, where she is recovering and trying to start a new life. As for Tala, she has a scholarship at a U.S. university waiting for her if she could ever leave Gaza. Our thanks to Matt and the team. For more, be sure to watch the ABC News Live special, October 7th, The Race to Survive, streaming on Hulu tomorrow. 18 days after the massacre, Rachel Goldberg, the mother of Hirsch Goldberg, Poland, one of the hostages, gave a powerful speech at the UN. She said in part, hatred of the other is easy. In a competition of pain, there is never a winner. The day after Hirsch's murder was confirmed, I exchanged texts with his father, John. Don't forget us, he wrote. Let us never forget any of those who died on October 7th and every day that followed.